Hi guys, what is up and welcome back to another mod showcase review on the channel and today we are going to be going over the update of the Alex's Mobs mod. They have brought out a load of new mobs for us to explore, use and play with guys and today I'm going to be going over with you all about these new mobs that have been added. But before we do that, make sure to subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell and then slap that like button. So, with no further ado, let's get into it. So, first up today, we are going to be looking at the Mantis Shrimps. These are giant crustaceans found in the reefs of the warm oceans. These giant shrimps are equipped with two powerful fists, which can move fast enough to burn their prey. These fists are also able to move fast enough to launch enemies back and break through blocks. Although neutral, it would not be wise to anger these guys. The mantis shrimp is a clever predator of the tropical fish, squid, guardians, and above all else, the shulkers. That is their absolutely favorite food. But if you're wondering, yes, you can tame these mantis shrimps. All you've got to do is feed them 10 to 30 tropical fish. If a mantis shrimp is out of water though for more than five minutes, it will begin to dry out. This can prevent, be prevented by giving this tamed mantis shrimp water buckets when sneaking, so they can live out of water as long as they want. They can live out of water indefinitely and follow you around and fight for you. Also, tamed mantis shrimp can be found and made to follow you, sit, wander and break blocks. When sneak interacted with while holding a block, one can give this block to the mantis shrimp. So giving the shrimp, say, a set block, say, a stone block, the shrimp will then go forward and break blocks that it sees of that type. And they will go and keep doing this until told otherwise. Mantis shrimp can be healed with any kind of fish when injured and can be bred with lobster tails as well. Next up we have blobfish. These are gelatinous fish found within the deepest depths of the ocean. Although naturally grey and compressed, the blobfish becomes a pink pile of sludge if under less than 10 blocks of water pressure. They can also be bucketed like any other fish. Interacting with a blobfish with a slime ball can allow it to survive on land, usually for display purposes since the creature is quite the curiosity they're weird looking pretty much they are odd if you slay a blobfish though its drops will allow you to form um, when mixed with a bottle fish oil which when doused with can allow limited levitation in either water or rain which is pretty awesome it allows you the ability to run on water and who doesn't want that moving on to the icy oceans now Seals are mainly mostly aquatic animals. They can be found on the beaches and or icebergs of the overworld. These apparently lazy creatures often enjoy to bask and sleep on any sand or ice that they can find. Seals, when one is attacked, the rest will flee into the water where they are more agile. Feeding a basking seal on land three fish will initiate a primitive form of trade between a person and the seal. In exchange for the three fish, the seal will scrounge the seabed for an item to return. Although this item is often worthless, junk like kelp or sand, sometimes it can be much more rarer items like shark teeth, skirts or nautilus shells. Seals can also be bred with lobster tails. Although these are adapt and extremely good swimmers capable of swimming rings and circles around most other aquatic species, except for their ultimate predator, the orca. The orcas will avidly hunt the seals. If they notice seals on icebergs, they will break the ice just to get to these poor creatures. Keeping with the snowy theme, we move on to look at the moose. These are giant herbivorous animals that dwell in the snowy tundras and snowy tigras. These are timid herbivores. However though, if they are attacked, they can use their massive set of antlers to deal dangerous levels of damage to you. 
They are very, very protective of their young and will naturally defend their young from any predators, including wolves. Moose can be tamed with dandelions though, as that is their favourite food. Every 7 to 10 days, moose have a chance to drop one of their rare giant antlers. And these antlers can be crafted to make a headdress that can give the wearer knockback abilities. It tends to take the moose about 3 to 5 days to grow these antlers back. Still keeping with the snow theme, we move on to the snow leopards. Snow leopards are big cats that can be found in snowy, mountainous areas. These cats, although vocacious hunters, are not aggressive towards humans. They will, however, be found stalking livestock, especially the sheep that are their favourite prey. Snow leopards will arch their back and sneak up behind their prey before dealing a devastating leap attack. These big cats can also use their claws to attack in close combat. Snow leopards are such proficient predators that their kills often yield extra drops as the creature had a high looting level. Although snow leopards cannot be tamed, they can be bred with our previous creature, moose meat. Meat from a creature they can only ever dream of hunting. These big cats are no pushovers and will defend themselves or their offspring from any attackers. We now transition to the swamps. The alligator snapping turtle is a massive semi-aquatic reptile found in swamps throughout the overworld. Unlike its passive sea turtle cousins, the alligator snapping turtle is a feisty beast that attacks anything that steps near its sharp beaked mouth. Able to bite and move surprisingly fast for a turtle, it is, the, it is best to leave these creatures alone when encountered. Alligator snapping turtles rarely move, if ever, and it is common for moss to grow and to build up on their shells over several days underwater. It's, if mossy, they can be sheared for a chance to drop a spiked scoot. These can be used to upgrade the sea turtle shell helmet. The spiked turtle shell helmet has built in knockback, resistance and allows players to breathe underwater for 15 extra seconds. It also can knock back melee attacks, occasionally alligator snapping turtles can be bred with raw cod. Sticking in the swamp biome, we move on to the shoebills. These are strange stork like birds found here. These intimidating looking birds are actually surprisingly timid and due to their timidness can't be tamed at all and instead will take flight when is attempted. They are often seen shaking their large strange beaks as well. When left alone though the shoebills can be seen often fishing, catching their favourite food. Oftentimes shoebills produce bycatch that are useless to them but not to everyone. Shoe builds can be fed crocodile eggs to increase the lure effect on their catches and fed blobfish to increase the luck of their catches as well. Sticking with birds, we now move on to crows. These noisy birds can be found in forests and plain biomes. These creatures are considered pests since they can often be found in circling fields and damaging crop growth. A simple carved pumpkin though is enough to scare away any crows from a small field. These birds will usually scatter and take to the skies whenever closely approached. Crows will pick up any food item they can fit in their beaks and devour it. Their broody appearance, crows are actually tameable. They can be tamed by tossing them some pumpkin seeds. Tamed crows are extremely useful creatures with a variety of different uses. They can be made to sit, wander, follow or gather items. And they will sit on hay bales to regain their health slowly as well. Crows can be removed from the shoulders by sneaking. When crows defend their owner, they peck their attacker dealing low enough damage not to make the monster aggressive. However, crows deal extra damage towards undead targets. Now we move on to the cute cuddly looking raccoons. These small mammals native to plains and forests 
Although neutral, they will beg for any food if seeing it held. They can often be identified at night due to their glowing eyes. Although it can be tempting to feed these cute animals, oftentimes there is little to no benefit at all. The raccoon is a known thief that often steals food out of chests and barrels and despite its adorable appearance can be remarkably aggressive. One curiosity of the raccoon is its washing behaviour. When given food near water, a raccoon will wash the food item under water, then eat it. Raccoons can only be tamed if given chicken eggs near water where they can then wash the egg as they see fit. Tamed raccoons can be made to sit, follow and wander as well. Moving on now to the hot savannah biomes, we find elephants. These large giant land mammals are found roaming all over the savannah biomes in great herds. In most elephant herds, there are three kinds of elephant. Calves, tusked and non-tusked elephants. There are usually one or two tusked elephants in a herd and they are significantly stronger than other elephants. They also have a special devastating charge attack. Elephants are defensive of their herds and most depend on these tusked individuals to be the most protective. Elephants can attack in multiple multitude of ways other than charging including using their massive trunks or to toss enemies or rearing up on their hind legs and stomping on their opponent. These mammals can often be seen standing up and tearing leaves off of trees in hopes of obtaining a somewhat rare treat known as the acacia blossom. These blossom drops rarely from acacia trees and can be fed to elephants to tame them. Wild tusk elephants cannot be tamed but babies and non tusked elephants can. A tame tusked elephant can be obtained only by ta attaining it as a calf. Tamed elephants can be ridden by interacting with them. If a chest is used on an elephant, it can, be, it can gain a rather large inventory stored on its back, which can be accessed by sneaking. Any carpet can also be used on an elephant to decorate it. Both the chest and carpet can be removed using shears. Tamed tusk elephants can be made to charge by feeding them what wheat while riding them. This charge attack speeds up the elephant and deals a large amount of damage to any creature in the elephant's path. Elephants need a resting period after charging though. Elephants can be bred with acacia blossoms once tamed. Moving on to the creepy crawlies in the caves, we have cockroaches. These foul insects are found underground, away from sunlight. These giant bugs avoid light as it makes them vulnerable to predators. They can often be seen scattering away from placed torches. Cockroaches are prolific breeders and often produced Othica, which are egg cases filled with multiple roach nymphs. Although naturally skittish around people, cockroaches can be fed bread or sugar to make them more comfortable. Cockroaches are considered a nuisance as they eat any dropped food item, making it dangerous to leave food unguarded in caves. Covering a cockroach in mimic cream from a mimic cube can result in a roach with a very interesting colour scheme. It is also said that they have a fondness for ma maracas, because if you give a roach a maraca, it will start dancing to la cucaracha, and it is pretty, pretty spectacular to watch indeed. Onto a more strange and weird creature found in the mod update, Mungai are strange fungal creatures found in the mushroom fields. These odd creatures are relatives of the Guardian and Strider, and are visually similar to them. Unlike their guardian ancestors, Mungai are completely passive. Occasionally they can be seen with a mushroom growing out of their mycelial coat that covers them. If fed more of the same mushroom, more mushrooms will take root on the Mungus. 
With one or more mushrooms, Mungi will fire a beam similar to a guardian's at a nearby mushroom of the same type. They will use this to grow more of that type of mushroom and if the mushroom is over mycelium, it may become a giant mushroom. This will exhaust the mungus and lower the amount of mushrooms on it. If slain with five mushrooms on their back, the mungus will erupt with a violent explosion and convert the local area into the biome pertaining to their fungus. For red and brown mushrooms, the, the mushroom fields and for crimson and warped fungus, crimson and warped forests respectively. The conversion of a biome can be undone by feeding a mungus a poisonous potato. Mungi can breed with mushroom stew as well and look how gosh damn adorable these things are. Now into the desert, Gusters are a vengeful desert spirit that only manifests during storms in the deserts. These creatures are inherently hostile and will seek to throw their targets high up into the air or shoot a stream of sand at them. Gusters can also lift up and drop item and toss it, making gathering monster drops difficult. Although powerful, Gusters are not very fortified creatures, they don't have much armour on them at all. However, their almost ethereal presence makes them more resistant to projectile attacks. They are pretty much immune to projectile attacks, if anything. When slain, Gusters will drop sand and occasionally, very occasionally, one of their eyes. These eyes can be used to craft a Gust Maker. A block that, when powered with redstone, releases a small gust storm. This little gust can push creatures and items around. The eye can also be used to craft a pocket of sand, which can be used as a weapon. Going from deadly to even deadlier, we transition over to the nether, where we are going to find straddlers. These are giant relatives of the common straddler. Of the Never, unlike the Strider though, Straddlers can only be found in the Basalt Deltas. They are much hardier than their cousins as well, capable on land and in water, as well as in lava. However, Straddlers are also aggressive. Any explorer that gets too close is considered to be an intruder and is immediately attacked. This makes it even harder to cross the Basalt Deltas as it is. The straddler uses its long netted hair to launch strad poles at their targets, which can deal a decent amount of damage. If, if slain though, straddlers will drop basalt and rarely straddlite. This mineral is uncommon and can be used to craft a straddle board. Straddle boards are diable as well. They float on lava yet sink in water. They can be used to cross the great lava oceans of the Never with ease. However, unlike their relatively safe Strider, the straddle board is prone to snapping and tumbling, resulting in riskier yet faster voyage. If someone using a straddle board hits a ceiling or a wall too hard, they may find themselves sinking into a lavery grave. Now we have the Stradpoles. These are the immature lava of the Stradler. They can be found in the shallow lava pools of the Basalt Delta and are launched by their parents at any possible threat. Using a bucket of lava, one can transport a Stradpole to and fro and ensure that it does not eventually disappear. Feeding a Stradpole a crimson mosquito lava, their favourite prey has a chance to grow the Stradpole into its hostile adult form. Stradpoles are equal at home in water as they are in lava and make a strange yet exotic addition to say any aquarium. Our final creature today we are going to look at is going to be the Warped Moscow. The Warped Moscow is an extremely dangerous and powerful mutation of the Crimson Mosquito. When a crimson mosquito sucks the blood of a strange fungal creature, especially one covered in warped fungus, it will begin to mutate into this beast. Once the transformation is complete, the Moscow will be enraged and attack any nearby creature it sees as food. 
Using its massive body as a weapon, its attacks include an aerial body slam, punching, smashing, and sucking the blood of its prey to regenerate its health. If slain, however, unlikely, the Warped Moscow drops Warped Muscle and Hemo Sacks. These materials, when combined with others, can be used to create the Hemo Lift Blaster, an upgraded version of the Crimson Mosquito's Blood Sprayer. It is a powerful item and long ranged and has good durability as well. It is one of my favourite weapons in the whole mod. Well guys, that's it for today's mod showcase review. I hope you learned a bit about the Alex's Mobs mod today and got a bit of an insight into how the different creatures work in this mod. They are phenomenal, they are amazing and I love them a lot. Let me know in the comment section down below what was your favourite mob from today. And guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. Until next time, see ya.